Hey everybody, welcome to The Real United States, and yes, it's another cooking episode. Um, if you saw our episode the other day, uh, I did a, um, a smoked salmon mousse, and uh, I showed the, the smoked salmon that we had done in our new electric smoker. And uh, so today, I'm going to show you a little bit more. I'm going to show you the smoker, I'm going to show you some fish, and a little bit about the prep for the fish. Um, you're going to find, if you if you look this up on YouTube, that uh, it's either a dry rub or a brine, which has just got water or wine for fluid. And uh, But it's all going to be very, very similar. It's going to be a combination of salt, pepper, and brown sugar. Now, indeed, what we used on the salmon when we did that was uh, half brown and half white, um, kosher salt, and black pepper and that was it just rub that into the meat and press it down that we let for set for about 24 hours I'm going to do a whole variety of fish today and I'm gonna not skin them or scale them uh, I'm gonna butterfly them and then we're gonna put this rub on them but we're not gonna leave it on so long we're all gonna leave this on for like a minimum of an hour no more than four and rinse it off and then we're gonna smoke them so I got my mise en place here one cup brown sugar. I'm using a quarter cup of salt. I'm using my pink Himalayan salt. And a half tablespoon, or i.e. one and a half teaspoons, of ground black pepper. And that's it. Now I'm going to attempt to mash this all together into some semblance of homogeneous dry rub. But of course, brown sugar is sometimes a little reluctant to behave. And it looks like I picked too small of a bowl, but I wanted to use the glass bowl so y'all could see. And I don't imagine watching me mix dry rub is all that much fun. So let me get this mixed up and I'll be right back. So there we go. I've got uh, my brown sugar, salt, pepper all mixed up. Um, I, I, you know, uh, I, the amount of salt you use varies on these recipes anywhere from a quarter cup to a cup to a cup and a half. You know, the more salt you put on it, the saltier it's going to be. So I'm going a little light on the salt this time in the hopes that we're going to get more of the smoke and less of the salt when we're finished with the product. But, I mean, it looks largely just like brown sugar, but it's got the salt and the pepper mixed in. That's going to be our dry rub for our fish, which I'm now going to start pulling out of the cooler. I'm keeping them in the cooler so I had them handy one at a time. Okay, here's our first candidate. Like a little, oh, one of my favorites. I have not had this fish before, but it looked so appealing. I had to get one so we could try it. And that's a lot of what today is gonna be, is we're trying these different fish so we see, you know, what we like. This is a blue mackerel. I didn't know there was such a thing. Isn't that pretty? That is a nice little fish. And this was only, it was really, gonna, all these fishes are quite inexpensive. Uh, Two forty nine a pound. I mean, you come on. I don't think you can beat that. All right, so here's a here's the thing, folks. I've never butterflied a fish before, but oh, they cut the pectoral fins off it when they gutted it for me. That was awfully nice of them. So I'm just going to cut here. 
about halfway. I want to leave the head on for this. Not for any particular reason other than, well, I don't necessarily want to waste the head. And uh, if there's anything edible on it, and it'll make a nice presentation. So to butterfly, you just cut through the rib cage right down along the spine from the inside. It's sort of like the opposite approach of filleting. But you don't want to cut through the skin. You want to keep this as a whole butterfly. There. That's it. And that way you've exposed so much more of the meat to allow the smoke to get at it. Now this is where you add your dry rub. And just sort of, you know, smear it around on there. Again, you're going to rinse this in an hour or two or four. So I get a little bit on there to get some. You want basically you're trying to draw some of the moisture out of the fish more than trying to add flavor to it. Yes, you're trying to add some flavor to it, but what you really want to do is you want to leach the moisture out of the fish. Um, even cold smoking, which this isn't, it is a drying process. So. That's it. I'm going to set our blue mackerel aside. And I'm going to move on. Let's get our next species. This is a Spanish mackerel. Woohoo! And I got to tell you the honest to God truth is usually when Bev and I have mackerel, it's canned mackerel. Which I think is uh, king mackerel. I'm not sure. I suppose it depends on the brand and this, you know, where we're buying it from. Okay, I'm not going to screw with that. This was three ninety nine a pound. Now fish, so good for you in so many ways. Low fat. The oils it does have are like really good for you. Again, when I bought these, when I bought these, I bought them with the guts in them. So this is a Spanish mackerel, a little bit bigger than the other fish, and three ninety nine a pound. These come whole fish where I buy them at the Asian market up near Baltimore, and uh, but they clean them for you for free, and they have any number of different things they'll do for you for free but I will just clean it because I wanted the head on I was paying for the head anyway but they take the fins off which is kind of nice so all you got to do then is finish butterflying them and not take a piece of yourself off in the process Now this one has a very short body cavity, so you have to finish opening the underside when you're doing the uh, the butterfly. Again, all you got to do on the butterfly is cut through the side of the rib cage to get fully flat, so that you can, you know, you want it to lay flat so you can expose some tissue. And on that dry rub, there's nothing magical about the proportions. If you want more salt, by all means, put more salt. If you want less sugar, put less, or, you know, but you got to have some sugar. Sorry about that for those of you that are concerned about your sugar intake. But keep in mind, you're going to rinse most of it off. There we go. And no, I'm not going to do the skin side because, uh, well, I'm just not. 
Spanish mackerel. Lay him down next to my blue mackerel. It is. Okay, we got cleaned up and started. Uh, this is our next candidate. Now this is, um, according to the, the, the label, simply called yellowtail. Um, I think that that might be a member of the tuna family, but I'm not entirely certain. If you happen to know more about this fish, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'd certainly appreciate the input. I really would. Um, Two ninety nine a pound. So nice, nice meaty fish. So whatever it is, it's a nice looking fish for two ninety nine a pound, which is less than the price of hot dogs. At least in this part of the country. Nice. Certainly looks like a tuna species. Get in along that jawline there by the gill flap. He did a nice job for me on uh, taking off the uh, the dorsal fin and the the anal fin. Trimmed off the caudal fin. They do a very nice job at Lote. So, if you are from this area and you're interested in where I got these, the name of the store is Lote, L-O-T-T-E. They have nice, nice products, good prices, wonderful fish selection. There we are. I say, that looks like a tuna species to me, but what do I know? And I didn't bother to look it up. This is a little thicker piece of meat, so I'm going to put my rub on quite a bit heavier. Not to mention I'm getting down through my pile of fish and I've got I know I've got enough rub, so I don't have to be quite so stingy with it. Just pat it down a little bit. Yeah, it's only gonna sit on there for you know a couple hours. Okay, put that on my pan and uh, go for my next candidate. This is monkfish, which I showed a picture of in the last episode, and I'll show right here now. This is that's a monkfish. They're ugly. They are ugly, but they are delicious. They are considered a delicacy, and for good reason. And they're only $2.99 a pound at low tech. So by all means, you should stop and grab yourself some. Because they're a very, very firm flesh fish. Even after you cook them, the flesh, um, I mean, it's almost like pork. It's so, uh, so dense. I'm only going to smoke one of these. I got two here. I couldn't resist at that price. Monkfish is usually 10 times that price. It is incredibly expensive. But, whatever. These are small ones. Um, because it's quite thick, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and take this right off of the spine. Um, they don't have many bones. But... These have a skin on them uh, when you when you get them from the store, uh, similar to what you would find on a catfish. Actually, pretty much exactly like what you would find on a catfish. Uh, again, they are nice enough to uh, skin them for you for free. There is a tip jar there, which I, I left them a small tip. To express how much I did appreciate the work they were doing. And no, I have never butchered a monkfish before. I've only cooked one once before. <laughs> and that was with the bones in. There we are. So it's very well split in half. Yeah, I'm going to be relatively generous with the rub. 
because it's a fairly thick piece of meat. All right, discard that. So these did not come from Lote. These actually came from one of the local grocers. Um, in this particular case, Harris Teeter. Um, fairly nice upscale uh, grocery chain here in the eastern United States. And these were also only $2.99 a pound. And they are, wait for it, wait for it. Rainbow trout. Aren't those pretty? Rainbow trout, two ninety nine a pound. I could not believe it. I had to have them. So I knew I was going to smoke fish, and I knew they had them at that price. So after we bought our other fish, we came back. We bought two of these, and these, of course, since they were sold in a regular Western grocery store were already cleaned. Smoked trout, much like smoked salmon, highly prized, prized um, fish for smoking. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to have more rub than what I needed, but that's all right. You don't know in advance, so. Now I could probably spread a little bit of it around on those fish. That I've already started. Seen a number of recipes, especially from the guys that make a brine, that use a lot of honey. That seems to be a very popular thing in Florida, especially from the cooks down there, uh, to include honey in their brine. So, all right. Well, they say if you go out and you start doing some research at this point, you definitely just see those right away quick. All right, there we go. Yeah, these are already, sugars are all dissolving in there and drawing the moisture up out of the, out of the fish. So I'll throw a little more on. It ain't going to hurt them. So what I end up with, folks, five species, one, two three, four, five species of fish. And I'll let these set. I don't know, it's uh, about 10 to 1. I'll probably let them sit till about 3 or so. And I'll rinse them off and I'm going to fire up the smoker and get them in there and then I will show you that procedure. And then come back, of course, when they get all nice and smoky, delicious goodness. So we'll be right back. Okay, folks, so we got our fish with the dry rub on it. We let it set for, you know, until like an hour and a quarter or so. And I rinsed it off. We got it here on some sheet fans. I dabbed it off to dry it up a little bit. And it's all ready to go ahead and go in our new smoker, which is right here. I got it all plugged in, ready to go. 
And uh, since this is fish, and not salmon, fish, um, anyway, I'm not gonna use hickory this time, I'm gonna use apple wood. It's highly recommended for smoking fish, by the way, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna try this. Um, I have used apple wood chips in the past, it's been a lot of years, but I really like it. So that's what we're gonna use on this particular fish. Um, first things first, I gotta turn it on, that's cool. I gotta set my temperature, which, there we are, set temp. And I'm gonna set that all the way up. And then I'm gonna set the time. And I'm gonna set that, I think, for three hours. There, it's on. So, I'm gonna go ahead now. This got this all taped up for me really well, except for the fact that now I can't get into it. There we are. I think she was afraid the wood chips were gonna spoil. I don't know. So anyway, this particular model of a smoker has this neat little thing on the side for dumping the wood chips into the chip pan so you don't have to open it up and go through the front. And although I am gonna go through the front to put some water in and the fish in, I'm gonna show you this anyway. It just slides out of the side. It only holds about a half a cup of chips. See, it doesn't really hold that many chips, but that many chips actually will give me probably two hours worth of smoke. I can sneak one more in there. Just put it back in. No, I can't sneak one more in. <laughs> Gotta be below the, the diameter of the thing in order for that to work. So, I'm going to put that back in, put it all the way in, and then turn it 180 degrees, and it just dumps the chips into the chip pan inside. Voila. So it's heating, it's timing. We're going to go ahead, we're going to open it up, I'm going to put the fish, I'm going to put the water in the water pan to keep it moist. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some water in our water pan. I didn't use the water pan when I, uh, I did the salmon. It seemed to work just fine. So here we have our blue mackerel and our two little rainbow trout. I'm just gonna scooch them in there the best I can. Be nice if I had two more hands, you know, but I don't, so. It's just the way I'm built. Only got two hands. Beautiful. See, we've got four nice trays, so I'm pretty sure I got plenty of room for my fish. Okay. And then here, I guess I'll put the monkfish. It's a little bit smaller. Right next to my other trout there. Push that back in. And then I've got these two trays for these two larger fish. This is our Spanish mackerel. Oops. And finally on the bottom I'll put our yellowtail. And that re does require both hands. <laughs> Beautiful, just enough room. So it all fits in there real nice. Got the water in, got the apple chips in. It's got a cam lock. The timer's all set. The temperature is set for 275, which is 
hotter than I like to smoke, but if you don't keep it hot, it won't get the chips gone. So now we just let this set. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set the timer inside too, so I can kind of keep track of the time. About three hours is going to be good on this. I'll come out, I'll stick a probe thermometer in it, make sure I want the temperature above 145 degrees on the internal temperature on the meat. But, you know, it's not rocket science. So we'll come back and we'll show you when this is getting all good and smoked up. All right, folks, our three hours has timed out on our timer and it has shut off. The temperature is already starting to come down, dropping down from the 275 it was at. It's already down to 241 degrees. And we're going to open it up and see how our fish looks. So, just pop it open. You can see there's lots of smoke. Wow, steamed up my glasses, something terrible. Coming out. And it looks good. So, I don't think I need to screw with it anymore. I'm just going to transfer it out onto my sheet pans. Well, I'm going to try. There's our blue mackerel. Beautiful. And our first trout. We've got a little bit of stickage. Yeah, a little stickage. That is our monkfish. And the wind is just screaming. So that's making my life a little difficult. There we go. Take the rack out. I'm able to see just a little better. Get this metal spatula. And it looks like I lost a piece of fish there. <clears throat> there is our Spanish mackerel. And finally, here is the yellowtail. I would have liked to have done this when there was still some light. It would have made this so much easier. This one stuck quite badly. I don't know quite why. Some of them stuck and some of them didn't. So that's it. We're, uh, we're done smoking our fish. Just now I'm going to take it inside, let it cool off. I can peel the skin off. We can wrap it up in some um, cellophane wrap and go ahead and put it in the fridge. And it should be good for at least a week. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little episode about smoking all these different fish in our new electric smoker. Please let us know what you think down in the comment section below. I, per I love hearing from everybody. I try to get back to everybody I can. If you're new here, well, usually we film with light. And uh, please... Consider picking subscribe and coming along for the adventure because we got lots more to show you. And as always, thanks for watching.